I think many of you did want to build their own audio system at some point, but for some reason this idea remained only an idea and did not go any further. Most of us think about it, because first of all, although there are many finished units and modules out there, we are still dissatisfied with the quality of assembly or convenience of operation of our end device. Today we will talk about the main principles of developing a preliminary design of a multi-channel amplifier, which is, in essence, a core of any audio system. We usually use factory-made speakers, while the other devices are designed and chosen based on specifications of acoustic generators that are already there. Let us look at a simple amplifier for beginners that is also very good in performance. This will be an amplifier built on microchips. So, first of all, we need to decide how many channels, including the subwoofer channel, we will need. In most cases, we would need five to six channels. Now we need to determine the required output capacity for each channel, leaving a bit of reserve, so as to avoid operation of microchips in threshold modes. Based on that, we now select a set of ULF microchips. For example, if we go with five channels, we can use a TDA, 73H6 microchip for satellites and TDA 2050 for the subwoofer. For six channels, we can use three TDA 2005 microchips or three TDA 1552Qs, with each of them acting as a stereo amplifier. OK, so now we need to manage the power supply. For what voltage and how capacitive would we want our power supply to be? Do we want it factory built or self assembled? Just use this formula. A sum of power values at each channel plus 30%. These are losses for heating and a small reliability reserve. And we also need to find out the required voltage. For instance, in the microchips used here, the standard supply voltage would constitute 14 volts. We now need to provide required cooling and, most importantly, decide if it will be passive or active. The last thing we need to do is select the form factor for the future assembly. Would it be a device that looks like a DVD player or quite the opposite, something that is more like a miniature music center? You can also decide that your device should have a special form for, say, installing a car. And, of course, we need a list of additional devices like filters, frequency connectors and all kinds of indicators. Now that we know exactly what our future device would look like, we can go directly to assembly. In one of our next videos, we will try to teach you all the main stages of this process and show you the main tricks.